Oh, well, let me turn my mic on. Is there? All right. I can't hear me, though. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you for a beautiful day. This is the day that you have made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that you prepared for us on this evening. Prepare our hearts and minds to receive everything that you've said and going to say, Father. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Matthew chapter 7, going to verse 13 and 14 tonight. Amen. Verse 13 and 14, Matthew chapter 7. Praise the Lord, everyone on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, iPhones, and iPhone, oh, and Androids, and everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling good. I'm always feeling good. So excuse my laughter. It's a, we got a joke going on here, so I'm sorry. Y'all can't get in on the joke. Got to take up the whole Bible class. So. But anyway, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, and it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. Amen. Now, we're going to deal with this for a while. But tonight side of it, we're going to talk about the fullness of time is at hand. The fullness of time is at hand. I, I'm, not, I'm not projecting a date for the rapture. But... Um, um, what I'm telling you is that God is telling each and every one of you that hear my voice regarding this topic of this subject. God is saying, do whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of telling you what to do. You won't listen to me. Um, God alone is the only one that knows what's going to happen from day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute. Nobody else. We, we, we think we see what's going to happen. We don't know. That's why when we look at this scripture, he says straight, straight, not a straight line, straight as in obstacles. For some reason, people seem to think because they have money, fame, and fortune, they, let me rephrase that, we seem to think that people that have money, fame, don't run into obstacles. Everybody run into the same obstacle. It just depends on what level the obstacles are. Um, I, I've watched a lot of movie stars die, and when they died, their family pretty much get nothing because all their money was really based on the individual being alive. Now, they still have residuals and all of that kind of stuff, but that's the basic of the money they get. And what we don't know behind the scene is that they are deep in debt when they die, and a lot of those residuals just keep paying bills off that we don't see, and we think because a rich man die that their children get a lot of money, depending on how much debt that man was in. But we don't know that. We just knew when they was alive, they looked like they was living high on the hall because they were, because they had good credit. So even though we down here, so to speak, don't have that income, well, you don't have that expense either. Uh, uh, most of you all stay in apartments. Y'all do not pay for gardening. Y'all do not pay for your trash to be picked up. Y'all are not responsible for your water line from the street to your house. You know, you, you are not responsible if your toilet gets stuck. Y'all call all of the people that's over your apartment building to take care of all of this. So you don't understand if you had a house, all of that responsibility would be on you. Your trash get picked up. Y'all walk outside y'all apartment to them big trash bin. You throw your trash. If you had a house, you walk out to the, your backyard, throw your trash in this c container, and you are responsible for paying that bill every month for them to pick it up. You have to call to make sure they pick it up on time. You have to call to make sure if something go wrong with your, your, your electricity. But see, when you don't have these responsibilities, you don't know. So you seem to think that everybody else is living good, but you don't have the responsibilities. What am I saying? There's obstacles and there's difficulties in any area, any person, wherever you live, you're going to run into obstacles. 
and it, it, it's kind of like for much is known, much is required. When you stay in an the apartment, there's a lot you don't know. But when you stay in the house, you have to learn a whole lot of things. Amen. Young people, children, you stay in your parents' house, it's a lot you don't know. But when you get your own apartment, there's a lot you have to find out. You have to get your water turned on, your electricity turned on, your gas turned on. You got to pay a deposit based on the last occupant of that residence. That's what your deposit, even though you had nothing to do with that previous bill, but you don't know all of these things. So you all want to go into life expecting life to be easier for you that when you were in your parents' house, when you don't realize life becomes more difficult for you. And that's why I tell you, young people, that when you graduate from high school, that's the first day of the rest of your life. When you graduate from college, that's the second day of the rest of your life. And I'm going to tell you when you get to the third day. I always hold that and give that to individuals because y'all not ready for that third day to know what it really means. Now, let's go spiritual. You don't realize the day you got the Holy Ghost was the first day of the rest of your life. That, that was the first day. Now, the second day, everybody that got the Holy Ghost, you in the second day. The third day is when you get to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. So everything from the Holy Ghost till you get to heaven is your second day. Because this is the day where you have to walk so strict in a straight gate to deal with all, accept all, understand all the obstacles. Uh, 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 we don't realize what we don't know when we grow up in Christ. There's a lot you don't know about Christ, being in Christ. And when someone come along to explain to you, you feel like God doesn't want this, God doesn't think that. I don't know where you get that from when you can read it in the Bible. He make it very clear. Straight is the gate narrow is the way you're going through a narrow obstacle course and that obstacle course is designed to puncture you cut you slap you abuse you twist you turn you and you got to go through it if you want to get to the other side in other words if you want to be a responsible adult you have to know how to get a job keep a job eat crow uh, uh, as y'all like to say, kiss behind, whatever, because when you get fired and you still got that house note or that rent note, you struggling now. You need to make enough money. And sometimes the money is just not there. And, and, and just like you all look at, uh, I say me, as a preacher, y'all think I got money there all the time. I got money there when I need it because Jesus is the one that takes care of me. I have nothing to do with it. That's when the gate, when you understand that straight is the gate. And, and notice we're talking about a gate. You got to go through a lot of obstacles just to get through the gate. Amen. So I want us to understand tonight the fullness of time is at hand. And, and God is saying, uh, uh, God is saying, when he say the fullness of time is at hand, he said, I'm really tired of trying to tell y'all what to do when y'all act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Because if I tell y'all, don't take no thought, don't worry what you're going to eat. And I told y'all, don't worry about that stuff. And y'all do it and you whine and complain. And Jesus said, I'm tired of it because I don't understand. And I, I remember I told a couple of people the story. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law, he was talking to our nephew because he's my wife's brother. And his sister, son, was feeding a turtle. He was about five, six years old. And he was feeding the turtle chicken or something. And, and, and Marcus said, he said, he told Denver, Denver, you can't feed that turkey, that, I mean that turtle that. He said, oh, yeah, he can eat it. Now, this is what Marcus said that stuck with me. And it wasn't so much what he said, it's how he said it. He said, boy, how old are you? And Denver said, six. He said, and you think you know more than me. And Marcus just walked away. Listen, how old are we all? Uh, how old are we? How old are we compared to God? Now, I'm going to bring it down. How old are you all in Christ compared to me? I'm 33, 30, coming up on 33 years. And y'all debate with me when I tell you what to do. I'm sick of it. Because if you're not going to listen to me, then please stop asking me questions. I know what I'm talking about. Listen, Jesus knows what he's talking about. Otherwise, he said, that's why he's saying the fullness of time, God say, um, um, and, and see, people don't think God getting to the point where he's just tired of dealing with people because y'all won't listen. What do you want me to tell you? 
Jesus is saying, what do you want me to tell you? I know what I'm talking about. I created humans. I know what you all need. I know what's going to happen tomorrow. Everybody that's at this church tonight, none of us is worried about going home. You think you're going to make it home. You don't know what's going to happen to you. How many people went somewhere today and didn't make it there? How many people went home, got off work to go home today and didn't make it? But that doesn't bother you, but you bother, you worried about paying rent next month. Well, how do you know you're going to be here next month? How do you know you're not going to have the money? Let's go to Luke chapter 13. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worry too much, you all. People are going to do what they want to do. And Jesus is saying the fullness of time is at hand. Amen. So let's go to Luke chapter 13. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We have to just sit back and do what the scriptures tell us to do. Don't worry about the outcome. God knows the outcome. God knows the, how they say the end from the beginning. God knew what was going to happen before he even created Adam. He already knew. He already set it in motions. Everything we do is already set in our heart. And God is saying, so nobody can walk around and say things function, things happen according to what you want. That is far from the truth. It happens the way God wants it to happen, and you want to tell the creator you know what's going to happen tomorrow when you have no idea what is going to happen tomorrow. Luke chapter 13, verse 23. Let's read. He says, yeah, chapter 23 said, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Uh, they, see, here the man is saying, only a few can be saved. And he said unto them, strive. You strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and should not be able. A lot of folks want to call themselves saints or Christian believers in Christ. Y'all ain't going to make it because y'all won't let Jesus tell you what to do. You're worried about what's going to happen when he tell you to take no thought what's going to happen. He's telling you, don't worry about it. I want you to be concerned about making it to heaven. That's all I want you to be concerned about. But we want to worry about a whole lot of stuff that means nothing. Amen. And then God sent a pastor to, to be there to give you guidance to help you. You call me, but you won't listen to me. What are you calling me for? Why are you calling on Jesus? Because y'all say, well, I call on Jesus. He tells you to call me. Okay, I believe that. I pray that's the way it goes. But so why don't you listen to Jesus? If he told you to call me, oh, he told you to call me because John going to give you some bad information. That's what y'all seem to think. If Jesus tells you to call me, then do. Always remember, Jesus said the reason he couldn't perform great miracles in his own town is what because nobody believed him. Too many people expect microwave results. See, that's, that's foolishness. You're not going to get no microwave results. You know, y'all want to get out of high school and make $30 an hour. You're a dummy. <laughs> How you going to make $30 an hour? You got to do something. Do you know that people that make $30 an hour have been on them jobs sometimes 20, 25, 30 years? They got all kinds of education, and then they had to wait for their turn to be promoted, and y'all got a bad, you, you can't even add and subtract properly. You, 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 you can't hold a thought. You can't write sentences. You can't even talk straight. Like, well, you know, like, you know, if I was to preach the way some of you all people talk, well, you know, like, you know, God going to do like, you know, like God said, well, you know, well, you know how it is. See, I don't talk, what, 15, 20 seconds? I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> that's what y'all do. That's how y'all talk. But y'all, 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 y'all want to get something that somebody else got that took them 40 years to get. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, y'all want to get saved, get the Holy Ghost, and bam, everything is, where you get that dumb stuff? That ain't Bible. So God is saying you have to go through this straight gate. He said many are going to seek to enter in. You are not going to reach the, the level in Christ without testing trials, you all. It's just not possible. You got to go through. He said many are going to seek to enter in. Many are going to come and look. But they said, uh-uh, I can't do that. 
That's why so many people backslide to go back to something they didn't like in the first place, but because they don't like Jesus' way of giving them direction to get saved, now they claiming that this way doesn't work. Well, you tried that dumb way 25, 35 years, you won't give Jesus a good five straight years. But yet his way doesn't work. And then you want to talk to somebody that then gave him 33 straight years, and my, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did we read 24? And shall not be able. Let's go to Psalm 84, verse 7. Psalm 84, verse 7. It's time for us to realize the fullness of time is at hand. The fullness of time is at hand. God is saying, listen, look at what the world is going through. man. Now, unless God shoot a blazing miracle, y'all can't expect the world to get better. You, you can't expect that. Amen? So stop expecting things going to get better and say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to trust Jesus. That's the only way you can do better. If you're not trusting Jesus, you're not going to do better. You're going to do worse. You're going to fall into the trap that this whole world is falling into. Listen, because the fullness of time is at hand. Paul said this stuff is going to happen. We, listen, the world is never going back to what it used to be. Y'all can hang that up. You can hang that up. Please put that stuff in the trash. It's not going back to what it is. I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll never be what it was. Right, right. Never. never. It can't go back to that unless God sent a blade. And God, notice this, God never moves forward and goes backwards. He never does that. If God changes something, he changed it because he wanted to stay. But he's never going to change it to go back. He's going to change it because the change he's making is making for the future. The future is the time, the fullness of time is at hand. The stuff is about to come to a close. And God is saying, y'all just keep doing what you want to do. Y'all do whatever you want to do. I'm going to have John and like preachers to preach the truth. But y'all do what you want to do. Y'all going to get mad at John and like preachers. You know, that what I mean by like people that preach the truth the way I preach it or the way the scripture is written, rather. He said, y'all going to have a problem with it. But guess what? It's still the truth. It's still the truth. It's been the truth since God told Adam not to bite that fruit. But everybody done come up with all kinds of ways to try to make that not true. You can't make that not true. It's true yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 84, verse 7. Read. What does it say? To go from strength. Is that right? I wanted, I thought I changed the scripture. I went higher up. Verse 4. That's where I want to start at. I thought I wrote that down. I guess I did. Verse 4 said, Well, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They shall be still praising thee. Say so, Lord. God said, Bless them that go to the house. Listen, when he says stay there, that means you do what the house is instructed, the information that comes to you. You're going to do it. I don't care what the world looks like. I don't care what the weather look like. I don't care what people personality. I don't care what the, the government look like. God say, if you stay in my house, you're going to be still and you're going to praise me. You're going you're gonna to listen to me. You're not going to let the world dictate. You know, if there's no better example than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. You can't get better examples than that. Oh, hallelujah. They told them boys, you got to worship that demon. And they said, we ain't doing nothing. We'll die first. And if, if we die, we have been delivered. Death. Watch this. Them boys say, death is better than worshiping a false god. Death is more uh, 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 beneficial than worshiping a false god. Listen, Holly, now you can't get no better than that. They said, because we got a God, we know. And remember, they didn't have the scriptures, some of the scriptures that we read. They just knew they had a God from experience. From when they came in, before they came into Babylon, they knew they had a God that would protect them. Listen, hallelujah. Listen, y'all don't really believe y'all got a God to protect you? Y'all really think because time, y'all uh, fell on some hard times or hard moments? That your God stopped protecting you? I told you Sunday. He said, y'all are engraved. I've tattooed y'all in my hand. 
and I got it closed. He said, you got walls that can't nobody penetrate, and y'all still think that God is going to let you fall because, listen, you, hallelujah, you want to do what you want to do. You think you got some sense. You don't have no sense. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee and whose heart are the ways of them. So you think you're strong? You know, I'm handling it, I'm putting up. You handle it, huh? You put, you doing that, huh? That's why you, that's why you still whining because you doing it. When you stop doing it, you won't whine. Oh, hallelujah. See, Amen. I don't whine because I don't do nothing. So I don't know, what am I going to whine? Oh, I'm having a hard, I ain't having no hard time. Jesus is having a hard time because I got my trust in him. And if things are going wrong in my life according to my way of thinking, that's my fault. Because Jesus said, John, everything I got for you, I got plans for you you don't know nothing about. Okay, I, I want to see this plan. Now, because if I don't see some something that I like eventually, then I know I got a lying God. But see, I know I don't have a lying God. So I'm going to let him do what he wants to do. Because I know everything going to turn out just hunky-dory. Because I got a God that cannot lie. So the psalmist is saying, that, so my strength is in Jesus. My strength is in Jesus. My strength is not in John Portis. My strength is in Jesus. And I have to believe that because when I stop believing that, I am going to start worrying. I don't know how to worry no more, y'all. I done been through all types of worrying. I done, man, and they didn't do no good. Me worrying didn't pay no bills. Me wor But guess what? Prayer paid my bills. Praising God paid my bills. Giving God the glory paid my bills. Lifting, giving God the glory fixed my attitude. Giving God the glory changed my surroundings. Listen, having money didn't change my, being a pastor, bishop, or elder, district elder didn't change my surrounding. The prayer, oh, hallelujah, that I sent up before my God changed my surroundings. Hallelujah. And I, we, you, if we don't believe this, oh, hallelujah. Watch it. He said, now you stay in the house, and then you, when you realize the strength is his worry, and verse 6 says, who's passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. The rain also filled the pool. In other words, Baca is, a, is a, 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 a bunch of crying. And listen, when you go through a bunch of crying, you get a lot of water and the rain come and help. Listen, all of a sudden, when you realize all your crying, all it did was make you have water to show. Watch this. God say, I hear you crying and I'm not going to be moved by it. Your crying does not move him. That's why you're crying and crying and crying and crying. Now you got a well of water and you're crying. Did he move yet? See, some of you all want me to move because y'all crying. That don't move me. God raised me. God raised me not to care about nobody's emotions and nobody's tears. Now, I have a concern about them because of your lack of faith in God when you do that. But understand this. You hollering about you hurting and you crying don't move me. Shut up. Stop crying. Because all you're doing is creating a whale, and God has said the rain is designed to do that. Why are you creating a whale that I got rain to do that for you? Why are you crying so much, giving me tears? God said, I don't need your tears. You go through the valley of Baca, and you fill up a pool with the rain. God said, why are you doing that? If, oh, glory. If you trust in me, stop the crying. Stop your crying. Stop your crying. You don't have to cry. All you got to do is when something go wrong, say, the Lord will take care of that. I'm going to do something else. My mind is on that. Jesus, that's your problem. That ain't my problem because you promised me. And I'm going to believe it's going to be taken care of. But we want it done our day, our way, the way we want it done, when we want it done. It's not going to happen. Never will happen. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 7. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them, desiring a period. Listen, if you learn, hallelujah, that your crying is not going to work. Listen, somebody say, well, isn't he saying my crying working? It's working because you find out he ain't doing nothing. So now, and when you stop crying, it's because he took care of it. How many times, how many times are you going to cry and it goes and get fixed? You cry, it get fixed, you cry. Do you think your crying fixed it? No. No, your crying didn't fix it. But you done found out you went from strength to strength because you held on. 
You don't have to hold on with tears. Why don't you learn how to hold on? Listen, what, what do we tell our children after a while? Come on, you don't have to cry. I'm going to take care of that. Listen, God is saying the same thing to us tonight. You don't have to cry. I'm going to take care of that. You'll go from strength to strength. And if you want to go from strength to strength in a winding pool of water, then hey, praise the Lord, knock yourself out. But you can go from strength to strength without crying because God said in the, notice how he put in the valley of Baca, meaning I'm not going to move you. Your tears and the rain is going to fill up this and I'm going to get you through it as long as you stay in the house. So tonight we are saying you're going to do what you want to do, but the fullness of time is at hand. Come on, let's look at another scripture. Uh, Psalm 92. 92. The fullness of time is at hand. Do it Jesus' way. Do it Jesus' way. Please do it Jesus' way. Stop, stop, stop working to invent another way. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. If you don't go through this obstacle, this complicated door, you are not going to see heaven. Stop trying to circumvent, go around, over, and under. You can't. You can't. Now, it may appear you went around because any decisions you make, there's repercussions from it. Come on, chapter 92, verse 12. 92, verse 12 says, The righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Righteous people are going to get strong. Yes, we get popped in the chest. Yes, we get knocked in the chin. Yes, we get, Paul put it, he said, we are cast out, but we're never forsaken. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to go through some times, y'all. Remember, I'm going through a complicated door. Do you expect to get through a complicated door easy? That's why it's called, that's why it's called complicated. Do you expect to get through a straight door when God is telling you? The door has obstacles. Straight is the gate. Just, watch me, just to get through the gate, <laughs> it's a problem. It's like passing from the back of this podium to the front. Just that alone is a problem. And y'all think because y'all got the Holy Ghost and got baptized, y'all thought y'all was just going to stroll on in. That's somebody lied to you because Jesus never said that. The Bible lets you know men are going to want to get in. That means they put one foot in and realize Hmm. Man, I had to give the church four hundred dollars this month. That would have paid my car note. See, you already ready to stop. All of y'all that don't pay your tithes right, y'all ain't got but a couple of a uh, uh, couple of toes in the door. You, you you ain't even got you ain't got through the, the gate, brother. You ain't, you ain't even got in the gate yet, cause you realize, man, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. I'm the first to tell you, it's a lot of money, but it's complicated. Amen. But go on and go through it. Oh, hallelujah. Go on and go through it. Yes. Yes. And when you get a raise, it ain't 400. It's 550 now. When you get another raise, it, 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 go, it keep going up. Amen. Every time you get a raise, it go up. And you still, can't, you still can't get a whole foot through the gate yet. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's look at Matthew. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 4. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Thank you, Lord. See, and these young people that's graduating high school and going to college, y'all finding out it's hard. Y'all making, making $200 a week and y'all waste $300 a week. Hmm. <laughs> Took y'all a minute to catch that, didn't it? You know, adults caught it right away because we know what that means. Yeah. But see, y'all don't know. Y'all make $400 a week and y'all waste $300 a week. I mean, you make... $200 a week and you raise and waste $300 a week. You say, how you do that? Because whatever you got was $200, you didn't pay no bills in the house. You ran up the water, you took showers, amen. You ate the food your parents bought. You did a whole lot of things. Now, supposing, supposing you was in your own apartment doing that and you brought home $200 a week, what would that do for you? Your water turned off, now you're funky. Amen? Oh. Some of y'all are riding on your parents' cell phone bills. Parents don't have a problem with this. I'm just showing y'all, y'all making a little money, and now all of a sudden you grown. 
and they can't tell me what to do. I got a job. Get out. And let your job take care of you. Let's just see. Do y'all know, listen, listen, do y'all know to really, to live halfway comfortable, if we know what halfway is, halfway comfortable, you got to bring, you got to bring home four grand out the taxes. Because your rent going to eat up at least 12 to 15 if you got a nice apartment. Now, we ain't talking about your utilities, all them luxuries you got. Listen, let me tell y'all something about Jesus. Y'all got more luxuries than y'all can shake a stick at. And y'all complain. Listen, you don't realize the reason you ain't sick is because of Jesus. Y'all think y'all healthy because of the way you eat? Look at the way you eat. You even eat right. Amen. Listen, listen. The reason you are in good health is because of Jesus. Don't you know if the Holy Ghost step away from you, some of us probably wouldn't even be alive. Thank you, Jesus. And, and then, but Jesus don't know what he's talking about. He don't know what he's talking about. The fullness of time is at hand. People, Jesus is saying, y'all going to do what y'all want to do. Come on, read. What did I tell you? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. And it says, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto a perfect way. When you live right, oh, glory when you live right, things just get better and better. You can see clearer and clearer. When you do what God say, things get better. You take that next step. You done got so, you done got so uh, 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 one-track mind, you're not paying attention to the obstacles no more. You're looking at me. I can see. I see something coming. Jesus said, don't worry about it. Oh, it's going to hurt. Okay, let me. Okay, I took that one. But, but you got to believe that. It's shining. In other words, the, the closer you get to Jesus, the better you can see things. The, listen, what did we read? I believe it was Sunday or last week. He said, y'all got preachers, y'all got people advise y'all that are dumb dogs. People want to tell you and try to give you advice on something that they ain't even experienced. Now, please tell me. See, that right there makes you just want to stop preaching. <laughs> People are going to give me, going to tell me what I ought to do, and you ain't even experienced it yet. But you know what to do. You ain't even experienced. Oh, glory, hallelujah. How can you give a person advice something you ain't even experienced? And then, watch this. Just because you experience something, you think you can give people advice how to get out of it. Well, I'm going I'm to be like Paul. I'm going to be dumb for a second. I was an alcoholic. Okay, good alcoholic. I tell y'all, this is the rule I had when I was an alcoholic. If I caught a cold, I had a drink of Crown Royal. So from now on, I want you all to take my dumb advice. When you get a cold, don't go to the doctor. I guarantee you, a shot of whiskey will knock that mucus out of you quick. Now, y'all want to follow that advice? Follow it. And I said it. Amen? Because the time, it, it's the fulfillment of time is in here. I'll tell you another thing. I'll tell you another thing. You want to, all y'all people that want to get laid real good. Let me tell you how you get laid real good. You get high. You go to the club. You, you dance smooth. You be cool. And I guarantee you, you'll walk out that, that, that place with a woman or a man every time. I'm talking from experience. I, I know what I'm talking about. So y'all won't take my advice about stay out of there. So take my advice how to act when you get in there, there since you keep going, because you seem to think I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm being like Paul. I'm being stupid for a second because y'all don't like sound advice, so let me give you some crooked advice. Y'all don't want straight advice. Let me give you some advice that twirl. Somebody say, Pastor, preaching to No, I'm telling you what you, you want to do it anyway. Since you're going to be a whore, let me tell you how to be a good one. Since you're going to be a drunk, I'm going to tell you how to be a good one. Since you're going to be crooked, let me tell you how to be a good one. Listen, all y'all that like gambling, sit at home, get your deck of cards, and practice. Get it from the bottom of the deck. Practice. You'll get good at it. Oh, hallelujah. You want, you want to be crooked? I'm going to show you a scripture. God said you want to be crooked, be crooked still. In other words, God don't stop you from being crooked. He helped you to become crooked. Since that's what you want to do. All I'm doing is all y'all that want to be crooked, I'm helping you how to do it. Since you done made up your mind, you ain't going to take the truth. So let me tell you some lies. Let me tell you how, let me tell you how you can live good for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years you got left. Since you won't do it the right way, 
I can tell you how to go through the wide gate. I've been through that gate. But this, I can, watch this. I've been, I've been walking through this, this straight gate for the last 33 years. I can tell you how to go through that one. But y'all come along, and y'all just looked at the gate and going to tell me how you're supposed to go through the gate. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The fullness of time is at hand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not mad. Don't go by walking I'm mad. I'm, I'm, it, it's just that don't keep coming to Christ, and he's telling us, I told you what you was in for when you came over here. That's a wonderful thing I love about Church of Apostolicity. I've warned everybody what you're in for when you come over here. I've warned you what you're in for when you want to be a member of the church. I've warned you. This is what you're in for. Now, it's up to you to accept it because it's brown today. It's going to be brown next week. I've been preaching like this the whole time I've been pastoring and been saved. And I got young people that's adults. Now, they can tell you, I ain't changed on nothing. I done got stricter and harder, but I ain't dumb it down. I done raised the bar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Verse, did we read verse 19? What is it? 4, 18, 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. God is telling you, if y'all take John's advice and be wicked, he's telling you it's going to be darkness. Y'all don't believe if you do right, it'll be light. So let me tell you, the other way is darkness. They ain't for two shades. Light and darkness. There ain't no gray. There ain't no such thing as gray. Ain't no such thing as a halfway dope head. Nope. Ain't no such thing as a halfway alcoholic. What's a halfway whore? I mean, I don't know how you be halfway. You know, you, you can't, there's no halfway. Oh, hallelujah. The first time you sleep with a person that's not your spouse, you're a whore. The first time you get drunk, you're a drunk. The first time you gamble, you're a gambler. The first time you lie, you're a liar. There ain't no halfway. Either you're going to tell the truth or you're going to lie. Now, the more you do either one of them, the better you're going to get at it. That's all it is. He said, what? The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what they're going to stumble. Now, God is telling y'all, if you go the wrong way, you're going to stumble, man. Stumble meaning you're going to trip over stuff you can't see. But for some reason, y'all don't believe that. Stumble meaning you lose your footing. Stumble means you trip over stuff you don't see. Stumble means you got obstacles in your way that's not visible. Listen, when it comes to walking spiritual, there's a whole lot of obstacles in your way that's not visible because your flesh tells you this is good. Stumble number one. It is good. Flesh loves stuff, and it's good. But that's your first stumble, and it's the biggest one. You know why? Because you just decided to yield to your flesh. And when you yield to your flesh, the Bible said they become your master. When you yield to your flesh, you are just been controlled or continue to be controlled by your flesh. That's your first and biggest stumble. The second one is you keep doing it. And you pardon me, oh Shelly more now, hallelujah. And you don't even know you are stumbling. You know why? Because you're in darkness. You can't see it because it's dark. It's invisible. It's not visible to the eye. But watch this. When you can see, you can see when that person flirted with you. You can see that the, the thought of you remembering you want to drink or want to do. And you know, I can't do that. I can't do that. But when you ain't thinking straight, when you can't see, you're going to stumble, and you're going to stumble real good. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 28. Well, no, let's do this one before we go too far. Let's do Proverbs chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Did we read that one? Chapter 3, verse 32. The forward, the forward, rather, is abomination to the Lord, but his secret, but his secret is with the righteous. A person that forward, meaning you're crooked and you low down. A person that's crooked and then low down, you don't know the secrets of God. I know God's secrets. Because I'm going to live right. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. That was a good feeling right there. Listen, I know the secrets of God. You know that? Watch, let me tell you. Let me tell you all a secret. One of the biggest secrets of God is when you evil, he helped you stay evil. If you're righteous, he helped you stay righteous. If you believe him, he'll help you to believe him more. 
But the way he helped you believe it is giving you more test and trial so you can understand he's really who he say he is. Because for you to say who he is because of something you read and heard, you really don't know. Paul called that your novice. You talking about how good he is. But watch this, y'all. When you really do what he tell you to do, when you righteous, he tell you everything. He's telling you tonight the fullness of time is at hand. But guess what? Everybody that's righteous understand that. Everybody that's not righteous still trying to comprehend it. You know why? Hmm. Just told you. Because you're evil, you're wicked, and you, you crook it. Amen? Now let's go to chapter 28. Oh, hallelujah. But if you're righteous, you know what that means. You know what it means when I say the fullness of time is at hand. That means it's time to get right, church. Time to get right. Time to get right. Listen, when the fullness of time is at hand uh, 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 in the world, when they tell you, all right, man, uh, uh, time for you to face the music, the fullness of time, that means time to go to court. When it's time to go to court, that means you're going before the judge. It's time for the judge to pronounce sentence on you or let you go free. In other words, when, when I tell you the fullness of time is at, is, is, is at hand, that means it's time to go to court, y'all. Listen, Jesus is getting ready to hold a court hearing, talk about the rapture, talking about uh, the end time. Listen, I, can't, I ain't giving no date, but I'm telling you, this stuff is getting ready, to, as young folks say, getting ready to go down. Because, listen, it's not going to get better. Y'all nope, nope. stop playing these cards, think it's going to get, it will not get better. Even if they give you a vaccine, the world's going to be in such a big mess. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody was telling me today how the police have made a decision. You got to fill out your own reports now because they don't have the manpower to fill out your report. Now, now, watch this. So all these crooked folks that love to do stuff, how many times you going to fill out a, a police report on somebody doing something? So that means folks going to become thieves and robbers better. Amen. Because y'all done got to this Black Lives Matter. You done shut the police department down because y'all done made them come up with more money they don't have. They already getting minimum wage almost to keep y'all safe. I'm not saying they don't have no bad one. What I'm saying, sometimes y'all go the wrong way to solve a, a huge problem and then it creates another problem. But why? Because the world is in turmoil. The world is wicked. Listen, judgment is in the land. The time... Hmm. The fullness of time is now, and, and, it's, and, and it's about to be a court hearing. In other words, the rapture is coming. It could be 10 years from now. Do you know what? how terrible this world can be if it go 10 years from today? Mm. Come on. I told you to go to chapter 28, verse 9. We're making good time. Verse 28, if that's what I said, Proverbs 28, verse 9. And it says... He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. God said, when y'all stop listening to him, he said, your prayer is an abomination to me. Now, I didn't write that. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, hearing the truth, hearing God, hearing the commandment, he said, your prayer is an abomination. Your prayer, watch this, is an abomination. That's like somebody going out making a human with animal parts. Who would mess with a human with animal parts? Nobody. Nobody. God said, that's the way I see y'all when y'all when y'all don't listen to me. So y'all wonder why y'all keep having these problems? Because y'all don't listen to the instructions that God gives you. Listen, the world don't listen to the instructions God gives us. What you think God going to do? He's telling you, I don't hear nobody. I hear a bunch of abominational folks talking to me. If folks talking to me. Talking about, I called them to preach. I called them to be a homosexual. I called them to be a drunk. I called them to be a lesbian. I called them to be an alcoholic. I called them to be a preacher. I called them to be a bishop. I called them to be a molester. I called them to be a pedophile or pedophilia. I called them. I call. God say, y'all don't follow the law. I don't hear. God say, how many prayers do y'all think I really hear that I listen to? When you think of the global of man, 
of the of all men, how many prayers do you really think God listened to? How many prayers? Now watch this. I'm going to knock some of the saints out the box. He said, when you don't take care of your wife, I don't hear your prayer. So I just knocked some more out the box. He said, your prayer just hit the ceiling. Look how many people praying to Allah. God don't hear them. Look how many people praying to Buddha. God don't hear them. Science taught you, God don't hear them. Uh, 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 Christians, that's make a big, God don't hear them. God said, because y'all don't follow the law. So your prayers are an abomination. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's bring it personal. How many of y'all are disobeying the law of God? God said, I don't hear your, now, I didn't write this. God said, I don't hear your prayer, so I don't know what y'all are talking about. I don't hear you because your prayer is an abomination because you won't listen to the law. Watch this. Watch this. How many parents will keep telling their child to do something and they don't do it? How many of y'all tune them out? Come on. Go on and say amen. You know you tune them out. In other words, I don't want to hear what you got to say. Well, Daddy, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Baby, what we having for dinner? Well, did you hear, did you hear so-and-so? Who? That boy? Oh, I hear what he's talking about. He's just a liar. I, why, why should I believe him this time? I believed him 10 times. He ain't did it yet. So I don't believe in number 11. And he got a whole lot of correction to do before I even go back to number one again. Wow. Oh, holly. God say, how many, do y'all really think I listen to y'all that don't do what I tell y'all? Do y'all think I really listen to y'all when I tell y'all through your pastor what to do and y'all come to me praying and you didn't, but you didn't do what he told you to do. He told you the law and you didn't listen to him. He preached the law on Wednesday and you didn't listen to him. You threw all of that in the trash that you read because he didn't say it. You read it and you want to come and tell me a different story. Oh, hallelujah. My law don't change according to your way of thinking or your sickness, or your crying. God said, I told you, stop crying. Didn't the preacher tell you on Wednesday, stop crying? Because all you're doing is filling up a valley that the rain is designed to do. He said, I'm still going to do what I want to do. So stop the crying. You don't need you crying. I done told you, this is the way it's going to go down. I told you, you have to go through a complicated door. I told every member of Church of Apostolicity that filled out an application, that I am going to tell you what to do. Do you think I'm going to stop because you old or a man or a wife or do I'm not going to stop. But guess what? You're going to do what you want to do. But remember, I told you this, the fullness of time is at hand. The fullness, and, and listen, if it's time to go to court. God is getting ready to call a big old court, uh, 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 that ain't, that ain't the way I want to say it. God is, is a, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. God is about to pick a jury. We got a, I got a summons. You know how you ever get a summons? And, and in other words, God is getting ready to pick a jury. And he's got to go through the jury process before you show up for court. In other words, hallelujah, he got, he got to separate the sheep from the goats. You know how they, you ever done jury duty? You know how the lawyers come in? I take this and I won't take this and I take this. I don't want that one. We need to get rid of that one. Oh, give me number five. I don't want number five. Okay, then the next one come up. And after a while, after three or four days of doing this, they finally get 12. In other words, God is about to separate the sheep from the goat. In other words, the fullness of time is at hand. What am I saying? What's going on in the world? God is separating the sheep from the goat. He's getting ready to choose a jury. But y'all don't know that. Y'all don't believe that. Because y'all think I'm crazy. That's fine. That's fine. Look how many people say they were saved and fell off. Look how many people right. claim saved. Listen, he separated the sheep. In other words, Gabriel said, God, can we use this? He said, no, that ain't no good. No, we, we can't use that one. And, and Michael said, no, we can't use that one. Well, can we? Okay, give me that. Okay, we agree. We'll take that one. In other words, God is separating the sheep from the goat. He's getting ready to make a decision. It's time to go to court. But he's picking a jury. In other words, he separate the sheep from the goat. The rapture is getting ready to take place because the just shall live by faith. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Remember when Daniel read the chapter uh, of the book? I can't remember. I slipped my mind. I want to say Jeremiah, but I don't think that it is. But anyway, he read. He said, go, wait a minute. The prophet says 70 years. He said, 
That's 70 years starting next week. We getting ready to get out of here. Oh, hallelujah. God said, when you see wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and die for plagues and earthquakes, he said, when the, when the, when the, I heard somebody say, uh, uh, I believe it was the, the, the upcoming president, say he's going to solve this world darkness. You can't solve the world darkness, brother. Oh, Only God can do Come that. On. But that's what people think. We don't have the power to change when the sun and the moon and the star, we don't have power to do that. What's wrong with our thinking? We can't do nothing like that. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, what was that, 28, 9? One more time. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Don't y'all ever forget that. When you stop listening to Jesus, God don't hear you. But see, people think he hears sinners. He determined who he's going to have mercy on. Don't you base that on the fact because you didn't have a hard time or having a hard time. You still got to obey the law. You still got to obey the truth. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Is the heater on? Go turn the heater off. I turned it on earlier, but it ain't. Hey, turn that bad boy off. I would say turn on the AC, but I'm going I'm to be nice. We got about a little less than 30 minutes. I, I think I can hang till the end. Come on. Uh, Matthew chapter 19. I sure hope y'all be listening to me. You know, I be preaching my heart out to us, y'all. I really do. I, I go through all of these scriptures to show us. And notice we still haven't gone over in the epistles yet. It's been a minute. I'm showing y'all. God done directed us how to do right long before Paul came on the scene. And I understand you didn't know, but that's my point. It's for you to see it. Amen. Paul came on the scene 20, 30 some years after Jesus died. But people don't know that. Amen. Come on. Uh, Matthew chapter 19. We're just going to do one verse, I think. Verse 22. Um, yeah. Matthew chapter 19, verse 22 says what? But when the young man heard the saying, he went away. This is Jesus asking him, if you will be perfect. He went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. What I say, we let riches interfere with serving God. Money, riches. And some of y'all even got no money. And, and y'all letting it interfere with you serving God. Y'all... Y'all, y'all, y'all hold back on ties on fifteen dollars. Come on, man. You go to Starbucks two visits and you done spent that, and you can't give God, but you can go buy some coffee that's gonna go straight through you, or or, or, or a caramel macchiato, or or peppermint mocha. Or, I, them only drinks I know. I, I don't know all them them frappuccinos and all of that kind of stuff. I, I don't know. Nothing. And y'all, and you can't give God fifteen dollars. And then when you make a thousand dollars, you can't give him a hundred. Riches. And that ain't, that ain't no riches, y'all. That's chump money. That ch oh, glory. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Let me show you something else. Y'all worry. Y'all worry too much. Mark chapter 16. Y'all worry too much. I hear people worrying about rent and car notes and food and Everybody that worry about food, go open your refrigerator and tell me you ain't got nothing in there but a carton of milk. Then I, I might worry with you. Now, I've been po-po since I've been pastoring. We ain't talking about prior to that. I don't count before I got in the church. I've been po-po. But I ain't never had nothing but a, I ain't never went in my refrigerator and all I saw was a carton of milk. Maybe I didn't see no turkey and chicken and beef. But I had some cereal. I had some bread. Maybe some lunch meat. And listen, I've had grilled cheese sandwiches and vegetables with some top ramen, so I ain't never been that poor. Amen. And I can't believe none of y'all. And y'all worried about what you're going to eat. What you worried about? Go look in your refrigerator. Go look in that freezer. Maybe it's time for some of you highfalutin folk to eat leftovers for three days. Amen. Some of y'all so highfalutin, well, I don't eat leftovers. Okay. Don't eat them. Nobody's going to make you eat them. But God said, don't come crying to me when you ain't talking about you ain't got no money either. Amen. Or you ain't got no food. Just because I didn't give it to you the way you wanted. You, didn't you have food, though? 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of y'all could stand a, 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 a four spans. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> chapter 16, verse 1 said what? And when the Sabbath passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And watch this. Watch this. You worry too much. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, that's Sunday, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the... Now, first of all, two little old lightweight women, why in the world are you going to try to roll a stone away that weighs close to three, four hundred pounds? What made you get up and go that way in the first place if you know you couldn't roll the stone away? You're going to put some spices on his body and you were... Wait a minute, just the two of y'all, or three is it? And y'all worrying about who going to roll it away? Well, what possessed you to go that way anyway? You thought you was going to run up on some brothers and they going to help you, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. And now you're worried about it. See, to me, if you was that worried, you should have planned that the night before and got your husbands or uncles or brothers or cousins or somebody to help you. So you going down there worried about something. Watch this. And among, I mean, in verse 4, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Watch this. And it was what? Say it with me. It was a what? A very, and it was very great, meaning it was huge. Hallelujah. Y'all worrying about what? Straight is the gate. You worrying about, you going to see Jesus. He told you, first of all, I'm going to get up. See, that's the first problem. They going down there thinking he's still dead when he told you he was going to get up. They didn't believe it. Now you're worried about who's going to roll the stone away. Well, now, I'm going to talk like I'm Jesus for a second. Well, since I told you I was going to get up, it seemed to me it wouldn't be no stone there when you get there anyway. Since I told you I was going to get up, since, since I won't be there either. You know, since I won't be there, why are you worrying about a stone? And if you really believe I'm, if I'm Jesus, then why are you worrying about coming to anoint my body? You ain't going to find my body. We're not going to read the rest of it. But when they got there, they found out his body wasn't there in the first place. What am I saying? Y'all don't worry too much. Y'all using today's energy worrying on tomorrow's maybe. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But you're going to get in your car tonight or go to bed tonight. Are you going to wake up in the morning? Is anybody worried about that? Come on, Zoom. Anybody, raise your hand. If you worry about waking up tomorrow, you worried about waking up tomorrow is about as silly as you worrying about anything else. Who in here, who in here, Tommy, you worried about waking up in the morning? You might not make it, huh? But you ain't worried about that. But you're worried about something else. Just like you worried about getting up in the morning, that's the way you worry about that something else, which is there is no worry. Beverly, you got to drive a few miles from here. You got to get on the freeway. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> now you make me want to talk about you and your truck. You get in that truck. <laughs> <laughs> no, he ain't. If he was worried, he wouldn't keep driving it. You Oh, see, now you're going to make me preach. You know that truck is only going to start one time. So you just know what to do to make it work, don't you? And you ain't been stranded since you do it the way it works, do it? You know how it works. No, he know how it works. He'll get in here. He'll get in there and drive to San Diego. He just know I can't turn it off. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Watch this. We know. We know Jesus is going to do what he want to do. So why do we worry? Has he, has he, has, has, Kayla, has he ever not done what he wanted to do? Come on, come on. So why are you worried? He's going to do what he want to do tomorrow. Yes, and ain't right. nothing we can do uh, about yeah, it. Right. So right. get with the program. Yeah. Jesus said, we all going to suffer if you're going to go through this straight. Yeah, so what are you worried about? Worried about. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, come on, come on. I, I, could, I could preach a sermon from that. John chapter, no, Luke chapter 9. You know, I'm, uh, you know, that's good you, you bold about people. I told y'all, I get in my old car when I think I got them right. Come on, baby, let's go for a ride. Pull this break down. We, we get trained, but we'll be all right. 
Because I done got stranded. That's, right. That's one of the downfalls of what we're doing. But I don't know if it's right until I check it out. Oh, hallelujah. Get up to 90 miles an hour and it start vibrating. My wife go to getting scared. No, baby. That just means my tires ain't balanced. Let me see. Can I get 90? <laughs> I know what the problem is, but I need to know what the problem is. Oh, hallelujah. Watch this. I come to church to find out what the problems are. Show me the problem, Jesus, so I can go back, pull it back in the garage, and get under the hood. Oh. And I'm going to go test drive it again next week. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, oh, glory. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Okay. Calm down. Luke chapter 9, verse 59. Stop being afraid. Amen. Verse 59. And he said another, follow me. I'm in Luke 9, 59. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But you go and preach the gospel. Your daddy dead. Nobody's standing about your dead daddy. You go preach for me. Amen. Listen, God say, y'all worried about who going who gonna to be upset when you come home because you went to church. God said, so what? They dead. Leave them alone. Don't be worrying about your husband that ain't saved or your wife that ain't saved or your children that's got a problem with you doing right by God. Let them folk do what they want to do. Jesus said, but y'all ain't ready to do that. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. John chapter 3, verse 16. See, y'all know that one. Quote it. Go ahead. Say it. I'm going to show y'all. Y'all just quote it, but y'all don't know nothing about what it's saying. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody want to look. Uh, uh, read that. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever should perish shall not, shall, that whosoever should not, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. So Jesus died so you could have everlasting life to be, continue to be a whore. Man, that's some powerful stuff, ain't it? Jesus said, I'm going to help you to be the best whore. Mm. I'm going to bring you to heaven. I'm, I'm going to help you to keep living the way you've always lived so I can bring you to heaven. I'm going to help you to go and get saved, dump every sin, but when you get saved and you got 10 years in, you can go pick them all back up. And I'm going to see that you get to heaven. That's what y'all do. You know why you go back and do it so easily? Because you disobey the law and he don't hear your prayers no more. And God, watch this. And he got a stumbling block in your way because you let your flesh control you again. Because when you tame the Christ, you fixed everything. But after you stayed in for a while, because you slipped here and there, and you repented and he didn't kill you, you just became, it became a way of life. Well, you know, I can fall seven times get up. So you're going to fall seven times on every sin. And Paul didn't say it, Jesus didn't say it, but at some point, don't you think you ought to get it right? So when you going to get it right? How many, how many of us want our children at home when they're 35 years old with a spouse and their children? When y'all going to get it right? It's time for you to get out of this house long before then. <laughs> Amen? But y'all want to y'all wanna do wrong and stay with Jesus, and he's supposed to be okay with it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the one I want to get to because I want to spend some time on this one. Time to go to court. Now, that ain't the title of the message. The message title is, y'all write it down right, the fullness of of time is at hand. People going to do what they want to do. The fullness of time is at hand. Thank you, Lord. The fullness of time is at hand. I sure have you put on in the time to go to court. Time to go to court. But that ain't the title of the message. <laughs> Time to go to court, y'all. He picking a jury. He's picking a jury. That's why a lot of folks falling off. A lot of folks falling off. And, and, I, and if I didn't know better, that's the scripture say there's going to be a great falling away, didn't it? I think I read that somewhere. Now, I can't fall off of this podium until I stand up there. So right here, can I fall off the podium? No, no. I ain't up there. No, no. So everybody that ain't got the Holy Ghost, they ain't going to fall away because they ain't never got nowhere. Amen. 
See, y'all put a lot of stock in people because they go out and preach the gospel. But let me ask you this. Are they on top of the podium? In other words, are they baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? If they don't have that, they're not standing on the podium, so they can't fall. Amen. They can't fall. You can't fall if you never got saved. Oh, how you got to get saved to fall. So don't worry about what the black Israelites and the Jews and the black Hebrews and the Muslims. Don't worry about them folk. They ain't never got saved no way. So they ain't going to never do right. They going to always do wrong. But when you got apostolic, Holy Ghost, tongue, talking Jesus, only people doing wrong, now we in trouble. So y'all want to know. See, y'all too busy looking at Israel. Y'all too busy looking at all of these other time clock. Listen, you better look at the stopwatch. The stopwatch is when the saints go to falling off, and the saints are falling off big time, fast. Hallelujah. Why? Because now the fullness of time is at hand. Jesus is picking a jury, and we're about to go to court. Oh, hallelujah. We're about to go to court. Somebody said, well, it sounds like you saying the rapture is here. Well, folk been saying that forever, so I think I can say it too. Because when it comes, it's going to be too late for you to identify it. The way you identify this right now, look at what's going on. Watch this. Now look at how Jesus put it. Verse chapter 22, verse 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So all of y'all that don't listen to the law, he said, I don't hear your prayers now. So you got to keep the law and the prophecy of this book. Now, you can say Revelations. You can say the 66. I don't care how you slice it. Which one are you keeping? Are you keeping the ones in Revelation? Because Revelation really don't, Revelations really don't give you no directions. It's to tell you what happened to the people that didn't follow the direction. So now you got to keep the sayings of the other books because Revelation doesn't tell you very much but to do what those other books told you to do. So which book do you think he's referring to? Oh, hallelujah. He said, I'm coming quickly. Quickly. Hmm. Quickly. Time to go to court. Verse 8, he said what? And I saw John, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then says he unto me, See thou do it not. Hey, glory of heart, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets. I'm the brethren of the prophets. Read. That's another sermon. I preached that one day for y'all. Of them which kept the saying of this book. Now, how did they keep the saying of the book of Revelation when it had not been re written? So what book was he referring to? See, y'all don't get it. I'm not going to harp on that tonight, but get it. This guy that say he's an angel, John called him an angel. He said, I'm a fellow brethren of the prophet who kept the saying of the book that God is telling him that if people don't keep this book, you're in trouble. Now, I just showed you. If you don't keep the book, if you don't keep the law, he doesn't hear your prayers. Read. Verse, said, verse 10 said what? And he said unto me, seal, not the saying. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Seal, not the saying of the prophecy of this book. Don't hide it. Let them see it. For the time is at hand. Now, John preached a message back then that the time was at hand over three or 4,000 years ago. Surely I can preach it 4,000 years later. For the fullness of time is at hand. Yes, Lord. Read this one. I love this. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Wow. Go on, do what you want to do. Do it. You don't have to listen to Portis. You don't have to listen to Jesus. Do what you want to do. Do it. So stop bugging me and Jesus if you ain't going to listen to us. Amen. And he which is filthy, let him stay filthy still. Don't that mean do what you want to do? Go ahead. Do what you want to do. Because Jesus said, I'm not changing. And John Portis ain't changing. Because the Jesus doesn't change, I can't change. And what else? And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. If y'all going to live right, you better keep doing it. If you're living right, don't stop. 
because of what's going on. Don't stop because it's not normal or common. Don't stop. Hallelujah. Then he said, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy. What did he say? Let him be holy still. So now you can be unjust. You can be filthy. You can be righteous. And you can be unholy. Or holy rather. Which one are you? Hmm. It kind of make you wonder. Which one really gets into heaven? And behold, I come quickly. And watch this. My reward is with me. You ain't getting it before I give it to you. So you want heaven? Well, it's with me. So that means I got to show up. If I don't show up, you don't get nothing. So that means we got to have a court. We got to have a court, y'all. So the fullness of time is at hand. So I got to show up and say, oh, so Micah, y'all chose John Portis, huh? Gabriel, you okay with John? I'm okay. So the judge said, okay, we'll keep him. Put him in the jury box. He jury number one. Hmm. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I don't know who's going to be jury number two. So I ain't going to put nobody else in that boat. But I know I'm going to be in that jury box. But see, here's, here's not, I'm, I'm going to tell you how the Bible says where the jury box is at. The jury box is really behind the judge. See, when you go to court in the land, the jury box is to the side. Right. But in, when it comes to, oh, glory, when it, hallelujah, when it comes to judgment, the jury box is standing behind it. That means the judge will say, hey, John, what about James? Did he do all right? I'm going to get old whisper in his ear. <laughs> you, ever, you ever notice when you go to court, you ever know when you go to court? Hallelujah, I love this. When you go to court and the judge say, hold on a second, approach. You never hear what they say, do you? Now, they, some of them, they say, they go outside. They come back. We hear them out there talking. They come back in. The judge sit back down. Objection. Grab him. Bind him. Send him to hell. Get him out of here. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm going to have to say sometime, John, so what about so-and-so? John, I think we need to step outside. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we need to step outside the courtroom on this one. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and Jesus said, come on, come on, John. Because remember, I made you respond. You better talk. Come back in. Well, you know, Lord, that brother wouldn't do nothing I say yet. I tried to tell him. You, you sure? Michael, what do you say? Hey, that was John's responsibility. Gabriel, John. All right, go back in. Grab him, bind him, cast him to outer darkness. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? Jury, Jesus is getting a jury together, y'all. The time, the fullness of time is at hand. It's time to go to court. So he said, all of y'all that want to keep bucking the law, keep on bucking the law. All of y'all that despise the law, keep on despising the law. Because when you despise the law, you are filthy. Because the gospel, the preaching, the gospel, the mercy, listen, I told you, I think last week when grace ran out, if the gospel don't clean you, what they say, the preaching of the word will wash you. So if you don't let the word wash you, you are filthy. So all of y'all that don't let the word direct you how to live, you're filthy. Because how can you get clean? We only clean by the word of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're only preaching. I mean, we're only clean by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if the gospel, which is the law, doesn't clean you, you are definitely going to be filthy. And what did Jesus say? He that is filthy, stay filthy. Go on and do what you want to do. He give you directions and say, do this, do this, do this. And then y'all go out and do something else. And then you want to tell Jesus that you did. He said, no, you didn't do what I said. How come you didn't do what I said? And you think I'm supposed to agree with you because you felt I didn't know what I was talking about. Boy, how old are you? Can you imagine Jesus saying, John, how old are you? I told you to preach the gospel. And you thought you didn't have to preach. How old are you, John? Because I've been here since the beginning of time. 
I am time. And now you telling me that I, I thought sure I made you, Job. Maybe you was there. Were you there when I told the water? Because I don't recall nobody being there. But maybe, maybe you was there, Job. I, and I, I, maybe, maybe I'm a little forgetful in my old age. You know, after zillions of years, maybe I'm, I'm a little forgetful in my age. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying, y'all? I'm going to let you go. But understand this. The fullness of time is at hand. It's time to go to court. God bless you. You have a wonderful night. And I love you. Amen. And y'all remember to stay safe.